southeast position. A man who is looking down and out, but has brought it back in fine fashion, I've got to say, on that map. Let's see if he can close the series back to a 2-2 in the northeast position playing Protoss. It is the one and only Root Minigun. Versus his opponent, his ex-teammate to the southwest position, now playing in Europe for My Insanity, the reigning champion of Shoutcraft America in the Red Trunks. Playing Zerg, it is Kane. Kane going for a very, very early speedling build this game. And that can be hit or miss against Gateway Expansion, which is, of course, the build we see from Minigun. If you play a greedy gateway expansion and you let some speedlings get in your base and start running around and just wreaking havoc in general, then you can cancel the Nexus, you can do some probe damage, you can just put the Protoss on completely on the back foot. But on the other hand, if they get the wall in up, if they, they keep you out, prevent you from doing anything, which is also entirely possible, then it's just a terrible economic opening for Zerg and Protoss ends up way, way ahead. And he is only going for speedling, it's not going to be like a Ling Baneling all in or anything, he takes the drones off gas. So it's really just going to be a matter of whether or not he can get links in the base and if he can get the aggression going. And we see an immediate zealot from uh, Minigun, and he hasn't shown. Some Protoss will cancel that to get the Mothership Core in the Nexus immediately after they see it's not a 10 pool. But Minigun hasn't been doing that thus far this series, so I don't think that's going to be the case. Oh, nope, he did cancel it. Never mind. So that's uh, kind of unfortunate for him. It would have been really helpful to have that zealot out. Yeah, Mothership Core is on the way, but it will not spawn with enough energy to go with the Photon Overcharge here. The Lings are already on their way across the map. We will see if this does the job. Bear in mind, Photon Overcharge takes 100 energy. That Mothership Core is currently sitting on around 60. So these Lings are going to be maybe a little bit of a surprise, but Kane is going to back off, as it turns out. But there's a lot more Lings coming on. I mean, there's 10 on the field here. Looks like he wants to group them all together and go for a push all at once. He's certainly committing to it. Uh, just, oh, 12 more Zerglings for production. He's committing wow. really, really hard to it. And I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure Minigun didn't see those Zerglings. His Mothership Core is like right on vision range yeah. of them, but just so. apparently out. Because he's making a Stalker, which would make no sense if you know that Speedling All-In is coming. And Minigun is going to be in trouble here. Yes, this this could actually, uh, it's almost certainly going to be a cancel on that base there. Certainly not going to finish, and the Mothership Core's damage is not enough. The uh, Ling is also chasing off that probe, which is an absolutely great catch there for Kane. More Ling streaming in here, and uh, I mean, this expansion is most assuredly going to get cancelled. There's no question about that. Yeah, Minigun's just leaving it up to buy himself time. He, yeah. he knew when he saw those Zerglings come in, he knew it was going to be cancelled. Gonna drop the Nexus Cannon. He has a Sentry and a Stalker, so he's not gonna die here. And I don't know, I think Kane actually kind of overcommitted to the Zerglings. I think he produced them longer than necessary. Yeah. He's just starting up his drone production now. But that damage has already been done. He forced to cancel on that Nexus. With that many speedlings, he's gonna have map control and he's gonna be able to delay the expansion absolutely forever. We actually see a very fast Twilight Council coming mm. down. So not sure if this is gonna be cheesy DTs. I, I think that's kind of the only, only option I really see for him with this. And that's a really, really desperation kind of move there. It, it certainly is, and perhaps we might see Kane just blind counter that immediately. There's only five workers in gas here for Minigun. I have to assume that that's a bit of an error there. And losing that expansion was obviously a big deal. Kane, as you mentioned, did invest like a huge amount into it. At the point where we saw that Nexus go down, it was actually more like 22 probes to 17 drones. But having secured that expansion and kind of putting the Protoss right back in his main and with no option to really leave, it allowed Kane to really increase his drone production significantly. And he was looking to stop that from going out, but that's not going to happen anymore. There's certainly a large enough army. And yes, it is a bit of a Desperation Dark Shrine going on here off of three gates. But, I mean, I suppose he could just warp in... He'd have to warp in across the map here. This pylon over to the side would allow him to warp in on the low ground, I think. But he's not going to get a probe out there. Yeah, no map control at all for him, unless he kind of feints a move out with this army, and I don't really think he wants to do that. It's a little bit risky, and Kane's going to know there's no way that he's actually going to be able to do any kind of warp gate attack this quickly. So I do think he's just going to have to wander them all the way across the map. There is always a possibility with DTs, and actually a really quick Roach Warren, with the Lair coming. So it looks like Kane is going to continue with his very aggressive play. He's actually sending in Overlord, but... Think it's gonna see. Well, here's a little attack coming in here, which was actually a complete failure. I'm really surprised that Kane did that. He, I think he just tried to get into the main, but the oh. force fields went down, and most of the links died, which actually seeds map control almost completely. Uh, while that was happening, Kane actually suicided and overloaded into the main. 
it got vision of the warping dark shrine, but he never actually clicked on it. So he's kind of going to be playing guessing games here, uh, if that's a pylon or if it's a shrine. Yeah, there's three spores coming up though, so I think he's just going to play it safe and just assume that it's a shrine, and that's a safe bet considering the situation here. Down goes another Overlord, Minigun takes that out, but funnily enough, Minigun actually has the ability to take map control back now that there's almost no lings on the field. Some roaches in production here though. Yeah, just a couple of roaches, so that's, that's still going to be defensive at this point, but he got that lair so quickly, and... He's on such low gas. He actually only has two geysers mining. I think he might just go for a speed roach all in. And with that many links in production, almost definitely. So Kane keeping up the aggressive pace. Minigun hasn't really committed to anything yet. He's not He's not trying to take that third. He has the DTs out, but he's not losing them. He's not going to sacrifice them. And he has a Robo and a Forge coming up and kind of a wall at his natural. So if Kane overcommits here, it could be the same kind of situation as last game where Kane sees an opportunity, does some good damage, and then just kind of continues to try and put too much pressure on his opponent. Yeah. And Minigun will then secure himself and take an economic advantage into the mid game. Kane seemed very prone to that thus far. But here, I think he's far enough ahead that it's going to be okay for him. Because he's just going to deny that third base forever, even if he can't do actual damage. Yeah, we're seeing Blink as the tech option after that, but also a uh, robotics facility coming down here for Minigun. The DTs have done precisely nothing other than force out a couple of Overseers and three Spores, which is probably not enough to really justify the investment into that tech. Warp Prism is coming in though, so it is possible that these DTs might be able to do something. Maybe. We saw that Kane in the Polar Knight game, Kane was actually really lackadaisical about defending that Warp Prism DT drop, and he kind of just won anyway because he was far enough ahead he could attack and just kind of dumbly succeed with it. Oh, and a lot of units coming across the map, they are going to deny that third. Yeah, and almost. this is just such an uncomfortable position for Minigun. Yeah, this, this is not really where you actually want to be as a Protoss actually. under any circumstances here. You don't want to let the Zerg rule the map like this. He's actually wasting a lot of time here, and Minigun now has enough units to defend that. If he had just ran the Lings in and cancelled the third immediately, he would have been able to. But he has only Lings rallied across the map, and there's enough force fields for Minigun that once that Immortal is out, I feel like he's going to be able to defend this. Because there's only a handful of roaches there. He's actually way too ling heavy to really make anything happen. Yeah, I'd agree. And now, as we mentioned earlier, those Dark Templar are actually going to get in there. That Queen's almost certainly going to die immediately if he decides to target it down, but he doesn't. He's more focused on the fact that his third base is being surrounded here, and it's still a cancel. He actually cancels it quite early, but those links will certainly die. What damage? He's actually going for the lair? No, there we go. I think he just wasn't controlling the Dark Templar. He's focusing on that defense there. And Hydra's now out. The Queen has been killed here. Where is the Overseer? Where is the Overseer? It is... Oh, the Overseer is now finally the making their way. Yeah. He's had to pull the drones there and a couple of hydras are going to die here as well so these dts didn't do too badly minigun killed eight workers there does that put him back in the game though i honestly think that if he had gone for the lair he might have been able to get it because kane was reacting kind of poorly kind of slowly so you're right that was a misclick he was just miscontrolling it but yeah. i think he he actually could have gone for it uh, Kane actually got Burrow, and he's blocking that third Nexus, which is really, really good for him. I would say that the game is almost even if Minigun had been able to immediately rebuild that third Nexus, but that delay is just so huge. Minigun's economy is... Actually, they're very close in supply, and a dead even worker count once again. Like, Kane going for the Muta switch, and without Phoenix on the map, I fear we could see a repeat of the Polar Knight game here. Well, we certainly could. The defense that comes in here. The work account is definitely good, but it doesn't really tell the story of the fact that that... I mean, it's not just oversaturated, it's massively oversaturated. The numbers mm -hmm. up to the top there that people say, it's like, oh, you need 24 workers to saturate a base. Well, not necessarily, but he's on 29, uh, <laughs> the natural, which is massively overmining to say the least, and even his main, he's got three works on each patch, which is generally not where you want to be for the most possible efficiency. So he needs that third base up so he can transfer those over. Otherwise, that work account means nothing, really. Yeah. In the meantime, Minigun trying a little bit more harass, but he actually ended up losing both the War Prism and all the Zealots for essentially nothing. So that, with the Mutas out, no more harassment's going to be coming through here. He does have Blink, so that's going to help him hold off the Mutas for a little bit. But Kane is just happy to sit back and keep producing mutas and game map control with that. Looks like Minigun might actually all in here, and this is not a bad choice at all. Because those mutas, there's not enough, not a big enough muta flock to really go for a base race yet. He lost a lot of zerglings on that initial cancel on the third base. And he really just doesn't have much of a fighting force at all. And this is a pretty scary army for Minigun. I really like this decision. It looks like a panic all in, but I think it might work. 
Yeah, and that might give him the time he needs to get a third base up, and he's pretty much mined his main out now, so he's transferring all his probes over. He's still going to end up being oversaturated on those two bases with it, but as you said, that is a scary army from Minigun. If we look at what Kane actually has to respond to it, a handful of Zerglings, a decent amount, uh, but with only plus one upgrade there. Five Roaches, 18 Mutalisks, I think is probably the scariest component of that, but they're going to be going across the map and trying to take out this main, Whereas I wonder if Minigun will just commit and just smash that natural door down. It's looking like he will, and this is going to go on Scout. He's even shoving the Archon forward as it morphs, trying to buy himself as much time as possible. Now it's been spotted. Yeah, those two Archons there make this infinitely more scary, because the Zerglings are the big part of the army that Kane was kind of relying on. And against two Archons plus force fields, they do almost nothing. Minigun does have to be careful. He's giving uh, Kane a lot of time to build up army here, and time is of the essence when you're doing a build like this, but... Three Archons against Mutaling, with very little Roche Hydra support, no Banelings at all. Yeah, if Minigun has good control here, good force fields, he can absolutely win. Yeah, he's he's got this nice little... He doesn't really want to move... Oh, the fr a few freebies actually miss Rally there. And it looks like Kane's just saying, I'm not fighting that in a million years. Let's go for a base trade. I, I like that decision by him. More and more Archons coming in from Minigun. There's absolutely no way it would beat the army now with five Archons there. But Minigun's kind of prepared for this. He has five cannons and a planetary nexus. Oh, he loses the Mothership Core before he casts the planetary nexus, so... Yeah, that's not too good. The Mutalists are making their way into the third base. The run-by is now streaming into the natural here as well, and... Here we go. This is base trade city on both sides right now. Tech is being destroyed. The bases are being destroyed. The Blink Stalkers take out the third base. The natural just fell. And Minigun's army has a huge amount of firepower. That's what I would say. Those hatcheries fell so quickly. The immortals are working on the lair here as well. Those bases are going to die very, very rapidly indeed. And this is now turned into a very chaotic game where there's actually 65 drones and two probes. That's the last... Where's the last probe? It's still mining gas, like a brave little soldier there on the third <laughs> base. But this is now going a little bit wild as Kane is pulling all of his units right now up to the top base, which has already been scouted. Yeah, with no probes out on the map, Minigun can't really commit to like a complete base race, but he also can't split up his army like this. The mute mobility of the Mutaling is going to kick in and kind of just destroy him. He does manage to reconnect his army in time, though. I think. Oh, he's actually just going to magic block the Archons and go for it. I don't know if that's a good idea. Mm, I don't think it is. No, it di didn't seem to work too well. Minigun realized what was going on, pulls an Archon back, only loses one. There's three more there, and plus two Blink Stalkers backing that up. And we have sentries there with full energy. So the Guardian Shield would be super effective there. And this last base is going to go down. So this is, I mean, this is still looking pretty good for Minigun, even though the, su I mean, the supply is very deceptive, because 40 supply of that is actually in drones here for Kane, which is not really going to help him against an army of this size. It's got to really rely on the Mutalisks here, and they're already taking massive damage from the Archons. Yeah, losing more and more drones, and as soon as that hatchery falls, the drones are literally worthless, with nothing to mine to. They're, they're just dead weight, and the yeah. Mutas are pretty much all gone. It's a decent standing army from Kane still. It cannot fight army versus army, but it might be able to eliminate Minigun faster than Kane can eliminate him. I'm actually surprised that Minigun did finish the hatchery off on 125, because a lot of minerals have been mined since then, but it's now finally going to die. The Mutas just got obliterated. There's only six of them left against two Archons and ten Blink Stalkers. The supply counts are evening up, but Minigun is in a, a decent spot. The Lings come in to shut down attempted mining here on the third base. This, this is a weird situation. I, I, I feel Minigun's got the edge, but what do you reckon? This is very, very close with those two Archons there. I think he has enough firepower to just win army versus army. And with no hatcheries left, that's, that's about all that matters. Those drones coming in. This is all going to come down to control. Both of them are capable of winning still. Yeah, and here it is. The Archons are getting focused down. One just fell. A second one. The drones are actually coming off the line, and they're doing significant damage to the links coming in. And there's the GG. The drones are the heroes of this match. There. They absolutely, oh. they caught him before he could get up that ramp, and that was the end of it. If he could have bottlenecked him, uh, especially with that one sentry remaining, he absolutely could have won that. But the drones catching him and keeping him on the low ground really won it for Kane there. Uh, a heroic effort there by Kane's drones, I've got to say there. And it did the job. That's it. Minigun is eliminated. The first player to go out of this tournament it is a pretty brutal single elimination format. But Kane, I gotta say, Kane definitely looked very dominant in the first two games, but he's showing some vulnerability, which is a little bit worrying. Yeah, he, that was suicidal aggression in three of the four games. Um, actually, kind of four of the four games. 
it was really, really unnecessarily risky. But, I mean, that maybe that kind of works against Minigun. He does tend to play pretty greedy early on. Kane maybe just absolutely confident that he would be able to make it work. And, I mean, he won, so you can't question it too much. But it, it did look a little bit shaky there. Yeah, that's very true. And it's a little unfortunate that Minigun should have to go out so soon. But, as you mentioned earlier, we're going to lose four players today. That's just the way that it goes. So, Kane is able to take his first win in the round of eight, which puts him through to tomorrow to try and defend his crown. He's looking pretty good, but as you said, he, he's impetuous. I mean, he always has been, but mm. he does seem to get aggressive when there isn't necessarily a reason to, and I have to wonder if that will come back to bite him in the ass tomorrow. Yeah, he's, he's a product of the kind of suicidal Roach aggression era of Zerg, like when Stefano just came out with his Max Roach build. That was kind of all Stefano did for like six months on ladder and so every once in a while he'll just kind of go ahead and attack no matter what continually until his, uh, either his opponent leaves or he loses and he, he's definitely matured beyond that but there are still those strains in him and we have to make sure that that doesn't kick in too much yeah that's true he's gonna have to deal with that because it does tend to lose him games from time to time it does win from time to time as well but mm -hmm. it's it's not he's not that he doesn't seem like he's that consistent especially not in this particular series but it didn't seem to stop him from dominating minigun anyway so i guess maybe we're overthinking it a bit yeah i i don't know i'd be i would be kind of worried for him it didn't look like an absolutely amazing dominant impressive performance if he were to run up against the majors or the scarlets of the tournament i would be a little bit worried um and then i'd like to see him against hitman just because i think that'd be funny <laughs> Uh, I've got to look forward to that one, i got to say. Well, if we look at the side of the bracket, then he's going to end up being against either Master or Major, who is, by looks of it, going to be our next matchup. We, of course, having to work around, but we can't play Scarlet's matchup because she's still playing. Major actually needs to play now because he has another match later on, so we're going to go with Master versus Major as our next game, by looks of it. That should be a lot of fun. I'm not actually sure. I, I haven't played Massa recently. On paper, I would say Major is like absolutely 100% a solid heavy favorite. He, I would say he's the better player, and TVT is a good matchup for him. But Massa kind of getting hyped up by some of the other players. He Maybe he has improved a lot. Maybe he has some potential to turn this into an upset here. Yeah, it's a possibility. The thing is, like, honestly, Major's TVT... We, as you know, the Axiom team has come up against this, and Ryung has lost to Major, uh, and that is something that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Major's TBT is rock solid, and mm -hmm. that's what makes me a little bit worried for Masa. Yeah, his macro is... I don't know, it's, it's hard to pinpoint a weakness in him. He's not, like, an absolute top world-class player, obviously. You don't see him winning tournaments, uh, even though he's been around for a long time. He's, he's pretty good in competitive situations. He has experience. He's a really good player. I would say his macro is his strongest point. I don't know. Maybe decision making is his weakest, but because he tends to really study things and think them through, he copies players. He's a big fan of like innovation and stuff like that. The very robotic, uh, very well thought out Terrence. And he just kind of copies them build for build and doesn't really tend to think things through. And so TBT is kind of a situation where you get into the mid game and then it's all tactics and macro. You don't really have to think too much. You can kind of just do things so that works out really well for him it's not so much like tvz or tvp where you have to make a lot of split second decisions and really figure out what exactly you need to do yeah that's certainly very so very definitely. true right well while we get the next matchup sorted out you can see the brackets on the screen right there that is a 3-1 victory for the current shoutcraft america champion minigun is out of the tournament and kane will go on to tomorrow to face the winner of our next matchup which is going to be rootmaster versus major which I am really looking forward to. That, that, I think, is going to be a really good TVT. And then we will be following it up with either Demoslem Hook or, of course, Scarlet Hitman. And it's really dependent on Scarlet at this point, I've got to say. So we will see where that goes. And we're going to be taking a short break while that map gets set up. That will give you a chance to catch up on the Scarlet vs. Jadon finals over on Northcon TV. Of course, if you are a proper PC gamer, you've got two monitors, you can watch both. And that's what I would suggest because, well, we, we like ad revenue. 
Northcon does as well, but we particularly <laughs> like ad revenue. We so... like it much more than them. <laughs> it's very true. Thank you for supporting the NA scene, folks. Obviously, we understand that Northcon's currently running, so we totally get it if you want to go watch that. But that's going to be over soon, and we've still got plenty more matches to go tonight, as well as the round of four and the grand finals tomorrow at a much more EU-friendly time. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I have been joined and will continue to be joined by Greg Edra Fields after this short break. Don't go anywhere.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft America Winter, and we will be going into the second series very shortly. I can solidly say that the stream has so far been far better and more entertaining than the rebranded Spike Video Game Awards, which are apparently absolutely awful. <laughs> I can't really think of a time when the Spike Video Game Awards haven't been absolutely awful, come to think of it. I've never watched them. I've heard stories about Jeff going there and meeting minor celebrities and just amusing anecdotes. I, I don't even know what it is. Like, are they awards for video game developers or video game players or just what? Just video games. They're, it's just, it's basically one giant industry circle joke run by Spike uh, with really, really awkward presenters. And apparently after the attempted rebrand, because they've been known for this for years, they have done exactly the same thing. So they will be giving awards to video games that no video game actually asked for and generally just talking about how great they are. Well, I enjoy awkward, so that might part, part mm. might work out well. Yeah, well, we can have that on a second screen here. It, 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 let's be honest, if the games get really bad throughout the rest of the tournament, we'll just restream the video game awards and just riff on them. It'll be fine. If we get Major playing at TVZ, I think we should definitely do that. <laughs> he, he's kind of a fan of the Avila style now, so we may need some side entertainment if that's the case. <laughs> oh, man. And I've actually heard Major has been having a fairly serious obsession with Pokemon lately. Oh, that he does. Yeah, he actually just spams anyone and everyone. Like, literally anyone and everyone asking them to Pokemon battle with him. Yeah. I don't know how he finds the time to play StarCraft. I've been trying to hook him up with Mr. Bitter uh, during the rather incredible Red Bull Battlegrounds New York. Every piece of downtime that Mr. Bitter had, and that wasn't that much, but every piece he could find, that 3DS was out immediately. He was carrying it around in <laughs> his suit jacket pocket. He was breaking it out under the table. I'm pretty sure he wasn't doing it during the... Actually, no. I'm, the first, like, few minutes of every Terran versus Zerg and, and a PvP, I know he was playing then. Because, hey, I'm the analyst. I don't have to pay attention to that. Yeah, that's fair. You can kind of just, like, the Zerg is expanding and making some Zerglings, yeah. and the Terran, he's going to make some Hellions eventually, and then probably take a third base. And then you can, yeah, you could get away with that. Yeah, yeah totally I think okay. that's fair. You know, I think that is entirely reasonable. All right, folks, we're going into our next game here. And yes, the portraits make sense this time. Master with Nova and Major with the Battlecruiser, which sounds, that sounds about right for Major. I'll go with that. Juanito Carlos... What? What? Is, that is a name. Holy crap! That sounds like some kind of Mexican superhero. Juan Carlos <laughs> Tena Lopez coming to save the day from the cartels. He has the power of flight and also the power to win TBT. Will Massa be able to stand up to him? We're going to find out on Yonsu. It's going to be the first in our best of five series here. This will decide who goes to face tomorrow the champion of Shoutcraft America Season One, Kane. I don't like playing on this map because I really like it if I'm bottom left and I hate it if I'm top right because I don't like playing on ice tile, so feels like an unfair advantage. It's also a terrible map for Zerg, so that doesn't help. Yeah, I, I've seen some pretty brutal things happening to Zerg players on this particular map, but a Terran versus Terran. That's going to be a little bit more interesting, although if it becomes tank versus tank, I can guarantee that they're not going to want to take that nasty base with the big cliff that can get shot very easily. <laughs> All right, folks, we are going into this one very, very shortly indeed. Just getting used to game heart. There we go. Sorted. Here we are. Welcome, welcome to Yonsu. And both of these guys pick very similar colors, I assume, because they hate me and possibly colorblind people. But we, we will find out. What do we got, folks? We have for you a man that's actually not on a team right now, but he picked the clan tag Kazoo for whatever reason. I'm not sure what that's all about. To the southwest position in the blue trunks playing Terran. It is Major. Versus his opponents. To the northeast position, some call him a ladder hero, but others have said in the Canadian tournament scene he is a dominant player indeed. Let's see if he can prove it. Returning from Shoutcraft America Season 1, where his potential was perhaps not truly realized, in the stylish purple trunks, playing Terran, it's Root Massa. Juan's clan tag is actually a back in Brood War. All of his IDs, most people know he's famous for like having a bunch of stupid IDs. Yeah. But most people don't know they're actually just copied off of random Brood War Terran players. Okay. And Kazoo was actually the tag of the Brood War pro player major. So that's, that's what he's doing with that. You are basically the only person who could have possibly known that. So I think I yep. chose my co-caster well for this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even remember. I think he was on team we made. He was actually a pro gamer, but yeah, no one else is going to remember him. No, he never no. did anything at all. Yeah, that doesn't seem likely. So we see already a bit of a difference in the builds here. We saw the gas first coming out here from Major. 
Yeah, the gas first. I'm actually not sure what TVT is uh, now. I, I tend to avoid watching it, and there actually haven't been too many Terrans playing each, each other in later rounds of tournaments. It's basically just been like innovation, making it through, and everyone else losing. Yeah. Since the last patch, Terrans have been kind of having a tough time. I have to imagine that Banshees are amazing in this matchup now, though. They just got a.